So these are just some questions to get to know you. So the first one is just starting off with something light and not so serious. Do you have like a favorite woman hero and why is she your favorite woman hero? Oh, that's a good question. I would have to say my daughter. Your daughter? She is so amazing. I love the way that she stands up for other people and the way that she stands up for herself. And it mm -hmm. inspires me every single day to be a better mom to her and to also be a better person in this world mm -hmm. for other girls like her. Do you have a favorite woman here that isn't family as well? Oh, good question. Someone who's not family. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one because I just love the spirit that women mm -hmm. have and that women bring to the world. So women who are doing good things, women who are trying mm -hmm. to make a difference at home, in their neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, in their community, in their state, in their country, just mm -hmm. women, period. Yeah. Understandable. Um, so did you did go to college, correct? I did, did. yes. Um, so what did you plan on doing before college? Oh, before college, I thought I was going to be an attorney. Mm -hmm. And I actually, um, after graduating from undergrad, worked at a law school at the University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And not that it turned me away from wanting to be an attorney, but it helped me to see that there were other ways to mm -hmm. serve and to make a difference besides I'm focusing in on being an attorney. So it's important to understand the law, but then I also realized that there were other ways in which I could impact mm -hmm. how laws are created. Okay. Um, <laughs> what work and motivation did it take you to get to the position? Hi. I'm her teacher. Oh, Sip, Jamie B. Attica it's Scott. So what work and motivation did it take you to get to the position and or job that you're currently in? Oh, you know, speaking of opening doors, there were mm -hmm. a lot of doors of opportunity that were open for me, and a lot of those doors were open by other women. Oh, really? And, yeah, so when I worked at the University of Tennessee, I worked for a woman who was in politics. She was a county commissioner at the time, mm -hmm. and she's now the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, wow. So what an awesome experience awesome. to, in essence, be someone who was part of her tutelage and, mm -hmm. and mentoring, and then to come home, back home to Louisville, mm -hmm. and to be connected to so many women who were doing the activism work that I um, was doing the community organizing work and to see how we supported one another, women in labor unions, women in houses of worship, um, as a woman of faith, that's really important to me, and mm -hmm. seeing women in leadership in church. So there was a, a lot of activism as part of my community commitment, activism as part of my paid work, and then also growing up in an environment where people were committed to social justice, civil rights, human rights, social justice, and having that just be part of what I was surrounded by on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. um, so you said you had a mentor, you're um, the mayor of Knoxville now. Did you have any other people, like a teacher or parent or counselor, that just really pushed you to like just do better, even to go into politics as a career now? I love looking back on the teachers who definitely push me mm -hmm. to do better, to work harder, to not be ashamed of being smarter. You know, mm -hmm. they were the people who motivated me. And oftentimes, those were black women teachers who okay. saw something in me as a young, as a black girl, and they were willing to keep encouraging me and pushing me to do more and to do better and to get involved and to make no excuses. So I really appreciate awesome. them. I remember one teacher in particular in middle school, like Carithers Middle School, who mm -hmm. she just was so um, encouraging of those of us who were there who were black girls, you know, especially those of us who were bused from where we lived in the West End all the way out to mm -hmm. Carithers Middle School in J-Town. She was like a, a place of solace for us and, and support and comfort. So there were definitely the teachers who were in my life, the family members, especially mm -hmm. the family members who were involved in community work in their own way. They got me involved, whether mm -hmm. it was through Sunday school or whatever they were doing as it related to community work. So I had a lot of inspiration and a lot of mentors who were helping to open those doors for me. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> Considering I feel like nowadays there's thankfully a lot more doors open to so many girls and young women out there where before I mean there wasn't as we know that whole everything that happened in history and how women have worked so hard to get to where we are now that's right and we still so, have to work right we, I know. we're still working we still, hard we still still do. still an uphill battle mm -hmm. but I, there's some something different for me in the way that women are supporting one another too mm -hmm. these days there's like I love seeing the young women who affirm one another, who are always giving each other shout outs on social media and showing up for each other. It's really encouraging I for know. me. I know, it is. I, 
I love the girl power. Yes. <laughs> um, how is your overall experience in your school and universities? Were you the only woman in your classes at universities? Did you feel like you were the only woman in the room ever? And you, do you care to share that experience? I have to say that going to a historically black college for mm-hmm. my undergrad experience was phenomenal. Oh. It helped to politicize me because I had pretty much gone through K through 12 at predominantly white yeah. schools. So elementary school, I started out at Coleridge mm-hmm. Taylor because mm-hmm. I lived in Beach Terrace. And so while that was predominantly black, I was then bused to St. Matthew's, which was mm-hmm predominantly white, and then Carithers, which was predominantly white, and then went Mm -hmm. to Manual High School, predominantly white. And so for high school, I wanted to attend a historically black college so that Mm -hmm. I could get a different experience. And that really was uh, an opportunity for being politicized and socialized in a way that helped me to better appreciate myself, my culture, my heritage, even though that was part of my upbringing Mm -hmm. with my family, very much so, but also having that academic experience. And then for my graduate experience, I attended the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Mm -hmm. And so um, there were very few times where I was the only black person or person of color in Mm -hmm. my graduate classes because graduate school was a a different experience. A lot of Mm -hmm. people like me who worked full time during the day and then attended um, night classes. And so those oftentimes tend to be people of color and, and other folks who are low to moderate income who are pursuing their education. So I was fortunate in that experience. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Mm-hmm. I have I know a few people now that they're really interested in going to a black college. Well, some of the Fred's girls here. And I totally understand, like, I, well, I've grown up, I've grown up, my father isn't in my life, and my father is the African-American parent. So I would love, I think it's so interesting to, like, get to know more of my heritage, and mm-hmm. I think a black college and or predominantly black college mm-hmm. would be a really great, like, start to it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, so how do you think your professors envisioned you at your in your classes? How, like, what would you say, what do you think they would say about you, like, n- now as a person or back then as a student as well? One of the beauties of social media is that you get to reconnect with people. Mm-hmm. So I'm connected to some of my prof- professors yeah. on Facebook, <laughs> and I think some may even follow me on Twitter. I don't mm-hmm. know. But... Uh, So some of them get to see who I am today and the work that I've done, and I have no doubt that they're in no way surprised. I even had one professor, a white woman, who Mm -hmm. taught at my HBCU, my historically black college, Mm -hmm. um, say to me, you're doing great work. I had no doubt that this is what you would do. And so I have no doubt that they expected me to be someone who was doing activism work because I was editor of our student newspaper Mm -hmm. in college. And so as editor of the student newspaper, you're covering all these issues that mm-hmm. happen on a college campus from, right. you know, board of trustees meetings to athletics to student sit-ins. Mm-hmm. So I was covering all of that and involved and engaged in so much of it from that perspective and mm-hmm. really wanting to give the student perspective to those stories. So they would not be surprised at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have any female professors and did you have female professors that especially supported you when you were in college? I did, and when I was in graduate school, Mm -hmm. the other reason I I think that my graduate school professors would not be surprised is because I was one of the first staff members who was Mm -hmm. president of our Black Faculty and Staff Association Mm -hmm. at the University of Tennessee, so they saw me involved Mm -hmm. in that kind of work as well. So I had both at the undergraduate level and graduate level women professors who mm-hmm. were very supportive That's of great. who I was trying to be in the world, the mm-hmm. difference that I was trying to make, mm-hmm. and they were helping to usher me along that mm-hmm. path. Yeah. Um, how do you feel working in your job now? Do you feel like there's fair treatment between you and the opposite sex? Well, in the work that I do every day for a living, I enjoy the work. It's mm-hmm. focusing on building a culture of health and uh, the people in leadership are women, and that yeah. is wonderful because there are ways in which we can work together and, and mm-hmm. talk to one another and share stories and experiences that resonate. Mm-hmm. And so that's been a wonderful experience for me. And again, that door opening for mm-hmm. someone like me to be able to do that kind of work on a national level. And that also means that for me, I have to make sure that I'm opening the doors for other people or leaving those doors open, making sure that mm-hmm. they stay open and don't close for other women as well. Okay. Um, what are some your some of your future plans and goals in life that you have for yourself? 
I'm looking forward to serving in Frankfurt in January as a state mm -hmm. representative. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And that's an example of mm -hmm. where there, the women, the black women before me opened mm -hmm. that door. Yeah. And even though it's taken almost 20 years to get yeah. another black woman in Frankfurt, that door is open wide yeah. now for other black women. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's significant in Kentucky. Yeah. And it means that we all have a lot more work to do to make mm -hmm. sure that I'm not the only one mm -hmm. out of 100 members of the House of Representatives that we make sure we get other black women and other women of color period yes. serving in Frankfurt because you know we're n really no longer in this black and white dichotomy mm -hmm. in this country we have to realize that that we mm -hmm. this is about people of color as a whole having representation in decision making mm -hmm. at the local state and federal level yes definitely I definitely agree and then lastly do you have any advice to your high school self and to other young women now oh my high school self I would say get more involved <laughs> Um, to my high school self, I would say, find out what's happening in your community, even if it's your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. What What is it that you can do that can make a difference, mm -hmm. um, no matter what it is? Because there's always something that, as young people, um, you all can do. So to my high school self, I would say, find out what's happening yeah. outside of that, that classroom building yes. and get involved. That's what our teachers tell us here. They're like, you need to get out of your bubble. There's so much that's happening in the world you don't know about. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to get caught up and everything that that's in your world and forgetting that there's that's more right. stuff out there, you know? That's right. So those were just like, because I'm doing, I have a set of female questions okay. that I'm talking, or that I have for like, like female interview questions. Okay. And then I have a set of male interview questions. Okay. And so then I have a set of general questions that uh -huh. I'm going to ask both of you. Mm -hmm. So I only have five of these. Okay. But according to Merriam-Webster, feminism is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. Do you agree with this definition? Why or why not? I definitely agree with the definition. I mean, it's a given. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no reason why men and women should not have equal opportunity and access to every single opportunity that exists mm -hmm. in this country and quite frankly around the world and so mm -hmm. we see where that's not necessarily a reality right here at home and in other countries and so we have to keep doing the work and doing the work together to mm -hmm. make it happen it's going to take all of us men and women working together to make sure that we do indeed have equality mm -hmm. um do you so i'm guessing you consider yourself a feminist you know, I'm not sure that I would say I'm a feminist because mm -hmm. I try not to add another layer of definitions to myself, another layer of, you know, this is who yeah. I am. I yeah. am a person, yes. and I am a woman who's fighting for women's rights and the rights of other people, people of color, people who are immigrants and mm -hmm. people who are queer. And so mm -hmm. um, that means that I am uh, an ist in, in yeah. so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so do you feel like the representation of women in government is particularly low in the U.S.? Why or why not? And do you know what the percentage of women that make up U.S. politics is? From my experience with the Raising Ms. President documentary, mm -hmm. I definitely was reminded that the representation of women in government at the national level and at state and local levels mm -hmm is extremely low, especially yes. in comparison to other countries. And even if we weren't comparing ourselves to other countries, we should still be disappointed yes. in the low percentages right here at home. Mm -hmm. And for example, in the state of Kentucky, I mean, to have one black woman about yeah. to serve in Frankfurt is appalling. Yeah, And I that's agree. something that we have a lot of work to do to change. Mm -hmm. And so these are just some statistics that I researched and found, just so information that you now know. But women make up 50%, 51% of the U.S. population, but only make up 17% of our government. And then the U.S. ranks 98th in the world for percentage of women in its national legislature, with Rwanda being number one, having 49% of their government being made up, made up of women. And then if the U.S. stays at the rate, like this rate of, being, of women being represented in our government, it will take 500 years for us to catch up and be equally represented. Well, and that's why we have programs like mm -hmm. Emerge Kentucky, which I went through, which trains Democratic women to run for office in mm -hmm. the state of Kentucky. Emerge yeah. is making a difference. We I have know. over 100 graduates and more than 20 women who are on the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. I mean, programs like that are accelerating mm -hmm. that 500-year yeah, uh, number crazy. because in 500 years, we can't wait. I know. Uh, we need representation now. We need parity now. We need equity now. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, in what ways do you think society can better motivate girls or women to actively participate in leadership roles in our society? Well, we definitely can support training programs like mm -hmm. Emerge. Mm -hmm. We can definitely support making sure that girls see the, the documentary Raising Miss President mm -hmm. because it really is inspirational to it see is. all these women around the country I who love it. are interested in politics. Mm -hmm. We can make sure that girls understand that politics is not scary. Mm -hmm. We're, politics is made up of people, right. and people really aren't. Um, at least people interested in politics are not as scary as sometimes they're made out to be. Yeah. Uh, and we can also make sure that we open up opportunities for girls to get engaged mm -hmm. in local and state politics because that's more easily accessible than maybe going to D.C. to lobby. Mm -hmm. So you can go to a Metro Council meeting right mm -hmm. here in Louisville mm -hmm. at 6 o'clock on a Thursday. Uh -huh. or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, presentation can take a group of girls up mm -hmm. to Frankfurt to the state capitol and see what a day in the life of a woman legislator is like. Mm -hmm. Those opportunities are so close, yeah. and they should be um, supported by our school mm -hmm. systems and our schools and by our communities. Yes. If this was your project and you had to create an art piece that represents women in government, how do you think you'd best represent that? Mm. Well, I love um, spoken word, so mm -hmm. while I'm not a spoken word artist, that's mm -hmm. um, I, I love to hear spoken mm -hmm. word performances. So one is I would have a spoken word artist who may mm -hmm. be uh, accompanying something that's visual because I'm mm -hmm. also a visual learner. So I would love to see something visual and maybe it's shoes, you know, walking mm -hmm. in a woman's shoes or um, maybe it's, oh, I don't know, I have to think about what else it could be. Um, maybe, just... it's, maybe it's women knocking down doors yeah. so there aren't oh. any doors at all, right. you know. Because that's another barrier, right? right? So mm -hmm. we're knocking the door down all together. It's open. Mm -hmm. It's open for all of us. You know, a door is large enough for one person to go through. Mm -hmm. But when you knock down the door, a lot of us can come through. Mm -hmm. That is, like, it's just, I have that last question, question in there just to, like, get the creative juices flowing. And mm -hmm. maybe you have a better idea than I have. But so this completes the interview. Okay. The formal thank interview you. Yes. so thank you so much you're welcome and i can't wait to feature you in my project well i appreciate it i'm honored thanks <laughs>